Chapter 26. Oh! A low cry escaped Walker's throat. Lee jumped off the porch. I stared at the creature in the yellow porch light. A woman. A woman with a grinning jacqueline at her head. Trick or treat? She asked, turning her jagged smile on us. Orange flames danced and flickered inside her head. Uh, uh, uh. Walker hopped off the porch and stumbled into Lee. I stared at the grinning pumpkin head. This is a nightmare, I told myself. A living nightmare. The woman dropped some kind of candy into my bag. I didn't even see what it was. I couldn't take my eyes off the pumpkin head. Are you? I started to ask. But she closed the front door before I could get the words out. More houses, the pumpkin heads commanded. More trick-or-treating. We dragged ourselves to the next little house. Doors swung open as we climbed onto the front stoop, and we stared at another pumpkin head creature. This one wore jeans and a maroon sweatshirt. The flames hissed and crackled behind his eyes and mouth. Two wide crooked teeth were carved into his mouth, one on top, one below, giving him a silly expression. But my friends and I were too terrified to laugh. At the next house, we were greeted by two gigantic creatures. We crossed the street and found another fiery-headed creature waiting for us in the next house. Where are we? I wondered. What is this strange neighborhood? The two pumpkin heads forced us onto the next block. The houses, per excuse me, the houses here all had jaguar creatures living in them. At the end of the block, Tabby sat down on her trick or treat bag and turned to face the pumpkin heads. Please, let us stop, she begged. Please. We can't do any more houses, we exclaimed weakly. I, I'm so tired, and I really feel sick. Please, Walker pleaded. Please. I can't do another house. I really can't, Tabby said, shaking her head. I'm so frightened. Those creatures in every house. She uttered a sob, and her voice trailed off. Lee crossed his arms over the front of his striped costume. I'm not taking another step, he insisted. I don't care what you do. I'm not moving. Me neither, Tabby agreed, stepping close beside him. The two pumpkin heads didn't reply. Instead, they rose up high in the air. I took a step back as their triangle eyes bulged wide and their mouths stretched open. Bright orange flames flew from their eyes, and then their mouths stretched even wider, and they both let out high wails. The shrill sound rose and fell through a heavy night air rose and fell like police sirens. The pumpkin heads tilted their, excuse me, the pumpkin heads tilted back until their flames shot straight up to the sky, and their siren wails grew louder, louder, until I had to hold my hands over my ears. I saw a flash of light and turned to see another pumpkin head pulling toward us from across the street. Oh! I uttered a hoarse cry as two more pumpkin head creatures hurried out of their houses and then two more, and another creature, and another. All down the block, doors flew open. Creatures floated out, floated towards us, hissing and wailing. Flickering, dancing flames shot out from their jack and lantern eyes and mouths, sending orange light into the black sky. They floated and bobbed down the street, crossing the dark lawns, wailing like sirens, hissing like snakes. Closer, closer, dozens of them, dozens and dozens. Walker, Tabby, Lee, and I pressed close together in the middle of the street as the pumpkin head creatures drew near. They formed a circle around us, a circle of grinning, fiery jack-o'-lantern faces over dark world bodies. The circle of creatures spun around us slowly, and as they spun, their heads bobbed and tilted on their shoulders. Slowly, Slowly, they spun around us, and then they began to chant in their hoarse, crackly voices, Shrek or treat, Shrek or treat, Shrek or treat. What did they want? Tabby cried. What are they going to do? I didn't have a chance to answer her. Four creatures stepped quickly into the middle of the circle, and when I saw what they carried in their hands, I started to scream.